Hey Rovers, it has been an incredibly challenging week, and it's not over yet. The Wave Rover 650, a design based on my single-handed ocean voyages. She's small, light, but easy to build, and strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland, and this is the Wave Rover Story. So starting last week, we started painting the exterior of the boat. And we, we got it primed, and everything was going well, and we had great temperatures between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. And then we got the first top coat on, and the weather changed almost immediately from 30 degrees and then less than 12 hours later, we're down to six degrees, heavy rain, and it hasn't stopped for the last week. And the paint, unfortunately, which it's excellent paint, but that paint remained tacky for five days. And I couldn't do anything in the shop because that would create dust and it would land on the paint and wreck the surface. So I, I was really limited in what I could do. So in this video, I'll show you what we did before the paint went on and some of the things I managed to do while, the paint, while we were waiting for that paint to harden. I'd also like to take a moment here to thank all of you that participated in the Rover Coin campaign. And uh, it's not over. In fact, uh, uh, 10 coins are in the mail heading out to those uh, people who have entered into the campaign. We still have, let's see, that leaves 75 left. I'll explain that at the end of the video if you're interested. But right now, there's things to do. Time to crack on. So just putting some of the handrails or grab rails on Wave Rover right now. So this is the forward one right here. And of course, there'll be one on this side. I've already drilled the holes for it. And on each side of the raised cabin top, we'll have one like this. So that coupled with the push pit, which uh, the way it, I've designed it right now is that there will be a bar that'll go over to approximately here somewhere here so you'll have pretty good uh, support and there will be just to explain a little further this will all make sense once it's um, once it's painted but right here at the top you're seeing four holes that's for another uh, grab handle some of these holes here these are for the cleats that'll uh, be supporting the yard and um, some of the lazy jacks uh, there's four lines in total um, as you saw me do earlier these two lines here for the or holes are for the rope organizer um, the two big holes here are vents uh, and of course as you probably know there's a vent that's going on the hatch itself on the hatch cover so these holes right here um, therefore the series drogue chain plate which will get bolted on like that. Uh, the holes in the series drogue chain plate, they're uh, 5 sixteenths. So it'll be four 5 sixteenths stainless steel bolts holding this piece of stainless steel, which is a quarter inch. And these holes right here, these are 7 sixteenths in diameter. So uh, today they'll get filled with epoxy. You've seen me do this a few times, and then they'll get drilled out to 5 sixteenths later. This uh, has its uh, two thicknesses of plywood at this point. And like I said, there'll be one on the port side. I've used the Jordan Series Drogue now twice. Uh, both times it wasn't absolutely necessary. It was, uh, I deployed it partly to see what it was like to deploy and partly to um, slow myself down. Uh, terrific piece of equipment. I consider it my real insurance policy. So this is the last major fitting, apart from the push pit and pulpit, that I'll be doing. And 
uh, we had a couple of options here. One was because we're, we, we have a camber going like this and we have slope coming down uh, as, we, as we shed water off the foredeck here. So we had a couple of options. One option was I could build this up with additional pieces of plywood. In fact, it would take three pieces of plywood and then once it was all glued down to this shape, I'd have to trim the edge, fiberglass the top, and then, or, or flatten it out so that I had a level flat surface and then get a piece of steel to suit. Um, that was one option, and that was the option I, for the longest time I thought I'd be going with, and it's, it's quite labor intensive. But then when I was speaking to the professor, and by professor I mean Professor Brian Smythe, uh, who's been helping me with all the metal fabrication, I said, hey, can you just take the pipe and lay it into the steel at the right angle so you can see that it's the pipe is actually plumb to the steel work it, it's um, you know it's quite a precise thing i gave him very precise measurements but the camber on the other hand you can see that um, the steel was rolled but when it's welded you get all these distortions so it's uh it's hardly sitting flat anymore but uh, I, this is very workable. Um, just the bolts themselves are going to pull this down and get it to about, I would say, 98%. And then that tiny, tiny little bit of gap that we might have in a couple of spots, say like, oh, half a millimeter or, you know, a sixteenth of an inch, that'll be filled with bedding compound. All right. Um, I think now is time to... Uh, bolt this down. So I've already pre-drilled the holes and we'll we'll see where those line up uh, It sh they should be fairly accurate After after we get a good fit then I'll uh, Look into over drilling and filling them with epoxy. So what am I using for bolts? I'm using quarter inch quarter inch bolts. So They'll just go through like that uh, I'll actually put a little washer on the top here just to avoid getting scratches. It's, it's not really necessary. And then on the underside, oh, let me remove my glove. So on the underside, we'll have these. These are called fender washers. They're, they're quite wide and they're designed for this particular bolt. This is a quarter inch bolt. That's a quarter inch hole. And then we'll just put a uh, locking nut on the bottom. All right, time to crack on with this test fit. So what's happening here is I had to double up the ply after I got the fitting and uh, that's what we're looking at here and it's a nice job I think. Now I had to drill a hole through this uh, beam support so that's, um, that's what I did there but I had to make the beam support wider so I laminated a piece of Douglas fir on there and uh, those screw holes you see here those were just help uh, hold it in place. Those are what I've been calling my clamps, my screw clamps. Um, they'll get filled with epoxy today. And also uh, this area is going to get a fillet along with above and below, just in case there's any water ingress from the mass boot. And also we're going to be rounding this edge. We'll be taking these bolts out now that we've fitted and we'll be drilling oversized and filling them with uh, thickened epoxy. Same thing you saw me do so many times. Anyway, let's crack on with the next step. 
So a slight change of plan here. I've decided to put one more deck fitting in, and it's this unit right here, just a U-bolt. Actually, it'll go like this. There we go, one-handed. And the reason for this one is, A, I just found it in my supplies, and it's something I wanted anyway. It's a place to clip off to just as you come out of the hatch. So you come out of the hatch, clip off your safety harness to this, and then you can get up on deck and adjust the Mark III wind uh, vane or, you know, just get up on deck for, um, well, for whatever reason. Uh, great safety device, you know, and it doesn't take up any space. Just need to drill a couple of holes. I'll just show you what the hole size is. So, so the, this is actually a, um, a 5 16 uh, diameter of threaded rod here. And these holes I drilled, they are half inch. And you can see sort of what the spacing is like. So by the time I fill that with epoxy and drill it out, I'll be left with uh, about a sixteenth of an inch or a good millimeter of epoxy uh, in the left in the holes. But of course, as you know, I wet out the holes entirely first before I even put the thickened epoxy in. So an absolutely stellar job has been done on identifying all the holes that will be in the hull. And some of them I still have to drill out. I'll be doing those in the next, oh, probably half hour because today is the day that we're going to start painting the exterior of the hull. Now, just a couple of things we did off camera. All the openings like this um, and the vents and any opening in the hull has received two coats of S1. S1 is a penetrating epoxy that uh, really, it's consistency of water and it really penetrates the end grain and does a great job on sealing that up. Okay, and then the one thing I wasn't going to do, but I've changed my mind on it, is uh, I was just going to drill into the hull here for the fasteners that hold the air only vents on but I've changed my mind I've over drilled and then I've uh, put epoxy plugs in I'm just about to drill them out right now so you just put this together and it becomes your template and I've already marked the holes uh, the other thing I've done is I know the thickness of my wood here is three quarters of an inch so on the bit itself you might be able to see this. I have a little mark with, I just made it with a blue felt, and that's five eighths of an inch. So that should save me one eighth of an inch of ply down to the bottom. And then because I've already gone over my points with uh, the template, then I just mark a center with my awl, just like that. And then it's a matter of drilling to the blue line and keep your, keep it plumb. Boom, that's it. Do another one right here. And so by just sticking with my little blue line, that tells me five eighths of an inch. And I'll just do the rest of these off camera. Well, Wave Rover is now prepped for painting. We have done everything we can think of in preparation. We've drilled all the holes. Now, interestingly, here on the ports or anywhere where there's been some end grain of ply exposed, we've given that two coats of S1, a penetrating epoxy. Uh, as well, any holes like that, that's a wire wave for the nav lights. That's, that's received two coats of actual just regular epoxy. Um, everything, everything has been dry fitted, all of her bits and pieces. For example, these two holes right here correspond with these two holes here. And that's a, that's a grab rail. 
the boat has been blown off with air. It's been wiped down. Actually, it's been blown off several times. We have really good temperatures. It's, it's uh, I think, 20 degrees Celsius right now. So we are set. We can probably undo that power cord. It's just for lights on the inside. And then we will be applying. Let's go into the workspace here and we'll see what we have set up. Yeah, we're also going to get the hatch. So uh, we have this product right here. Actually, a big shout out to Total Boat. They've been really nice to Wave Rover. They've set us up with a whole kit of painting supplies. So we're going to use their de-waxer product first and just uh, wipe down the whole top side of the boat. And then we'll be using this product right here, which is top side primer. Um, it, I don't think it's supposed to come in this shape. If you can see it, it was damaged. It was damaged by uh, UPS, I believe, or I don't know who did it, but when it arrived, um, several of the cans look like this. So after we open this, I don't think we're going to use the full can. So we're standing by, what do we have, Mrs. Rover? We have some West Coast Dark Roast Coffee that has been taken out of this can and the uh, extra primer will go in there. Uh, something else we did, um, this little block right here, Mrs. Rover did this. So what happens is this line right here is uh, this dotted line. That's the line. Well, it's, it's actually five inches above our water line and it's where I want the top side paint to end. But this primer, we're going to take the primer down just two inches below it so that we don't have just base epoxy when we go to tape that off for the for the actual top side paint. And to do that, I used a I used a laser level just to get that all the way around the boat. And then we just used a little block of wood just to get us two two and a quarter inches lower. All right. With all that said, we've got <laughs> Mrs. Rover here. Oh, yeah, that's got to be the happiest painter you've ever met. And yeah, the hatch has received two coats of S1. Everything's been set. These are uh, these are actual supports for the stairs. We're trying to think ahead to make our life easier down the road. Anyway, now it's time to get on with the paint. So I'm here in my tropical whites because it is the warmest day of the year and we're about to apply the first paint. It's just a primer. But there we go. Wave Rover's first little bit of paint. We'll give you an update when we start rolling. So first off, let's just get it right out. I am not a painter. So, uh, but am I happy? Yes, this paint we're using, the Total Boat, it makes a non-painter like me look good. I mean, is this finish perfect? Far from it, absolutely far from it, but it is absolutely acceptable for what I'm after. And, oh, there's a friend right there. I'm going to ask you to move, move. Well done, well done. So you might notice that we didn't paint the whole boat and that's because we'll be using another product in the center portion here, which is Total Tread. It's, uh, it's one of those paints with um, some sort of rubberized bits in it that'll give you good, uh, good tread uh, when you're walking on it. Now, same up here, there's big open areas where I'll be putting total tread. It's got a nice shine to it. Today is the hottest day of the year at 30 degrees. So yeah, you're getting a feeling for what she'll look like. 
It'll be another few days until I get the total tread on. I think uh, to be safe, tomorrow's only 12 degrees and rain. So we'll get the second coat on during that period. We won't, uh, we don't have enough time to get a second coat on before nightfall. But overall, very nice. And we've taken this paint down to, uh, it's, it's approximately an inch and a half to two inches below where I'll have my uh, uh, bottom paint. But that bottom paint line, the top of the bottom paint line is going to be about um, five inches above the waterline. So uh, this paint is only designed for above waterline and that's exactly where it'll be. All right, now I'm going to assist uh, Charlotte here off the boat. So this is what we're using. Total Boat Wet Edge One Part Polyurethane Top Side Paint. And how much did we use? Well, we're probably right about here after the first coat on the boat. Um, absolutely terrific paint. Now, it took quite a bit of time to stir it because there were a lot of solids on the bottom, but we like that because the solids actually have a fair about of a fair amount of fairing uh, ability within them. So it's good to get that totally mixed and then put it on as thinly as possible, which is what I tried to do. As I've already said, I'm no painter, but uh, the product looks really good in my humble opinion. So I'm here with Dave. Dave, give us a smile and a wave. Dave is the sail maker who made Wave Rover sail just arrived today. It, we would like to do this outside, but we're in the middle of about a two week rain period. So we didn't want to get the sail wet. Beautiful sailcloth. And the sail is really light. What would you estimate the weight to be, Dave? Oh, I... It seemed really light when yeah, I lifted it. A couple pounds maybe, if that. Well, maybe. Maybe five, five ten pounds? pounds? Yeah. yeah. Honestly. So here the sail and then the batten pocket is on a on a separate tape so the, the batten will never actually chafe against the right the sail cloth. So I'll just uh, so this is the sail cloth here. Yeah. This strip right here, that's an extra piece. And then on top of that, we have the batten pockets. And the batten pockets, why do they have a break right here? Well, the reason is that's where the peril is tied to. The mast is actually located closer to this area. So, and why, why is it shiny, Dave? Well, we put a, um, a, a, a film, uh, just an adhesive back film on here. Uh, for that'll be the area of chafe for the the mast. Right, and we'll test and that out, and, and it's sacrificial. Exactly, in, in a way. you can either yeah. peel it off and replace it. I've sent you some along, or if you find it just needs a small uh, piece, you, the the product will adhere to itself very well, and you can just cover the small area. Right, right, and this has been fantastic of Dave who doesn't live in PEI, but came out here to deliver this sale. I think he had another errand to run as well, but thank indeed. you very much. So let's so, let's take a look at the stitching here. Nice job. This is a four point uh, zigzag. So each one of these zigs has uh, three individual stitches in it. Nice, very nice. So the overlap comes to about where my nail is, I would take yeah, it. Yes, so that's right? your seam width there. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. nice and heavy. And I see we're triple stitched uh, around the perimeter. Yeah. And this is a double turnover, so it's actually, um, we have three layers there. So how do you get it so crisp? Do you iron it? Nope, that's just the way the okay. fabric lies, yeah. <laughs> you didn't get the holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's okay, we'll make them line up and then mark them. Okay, so these ones here we can stick a, a mold yeah. in. See that one bent up? You can bend that. It's only on the boat. Same this one. Just a light tack. No, I don't want to scratch it. Must be the paint that's You got it in? 
might have to tap that one. Yeah, same, same here. Okay. Okay. So we need to measure this distance. Okay. As you hold it. So the distance from the back of this pipe to the front of this will go to the center is 31 inches. Okay. And I, I believe it was the same on the other side. So don't move. <coughs> That's where you want it. Now when I take weld that on, it'll be exactly the same spot. Okay. And now let's, uh, I can get the film. <laughs> I'll just mark where 31 is here. 31 is right there. Yep. And when I pull that down, I will line these marks up. Okay. Okay. That's here's it. here's an idea. <laughs> Why don't we get Mrs. Rover just to hold that in place, and then you get your camera out to take the take the photos of uh, all yeah. the angles. I'll just hold this so in place that's, again. Uh, that's pretty cool. You see, uh, look at the the way it sweeps up. It's kind of hard to get the angle, but I like that. That's uh, that's the look I was going for. That's got the kind of dare I say the cute factor, kind of like a Volkswagen uh, bug. Okay, go like this and I'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it'll be nice and strong. That's two, four, six, eight quarter inch bolts that'll be holding it on. So I'll feel very secure about leaning up there and doing my uh, Titanic pose. I'm going to take a picture of this from a different angle. Yeah. And the solution that we came up uh, to line everything up because uh, what we did was we just broke the tacks up here and then move them back and now we've given some marks. The, the issue is that Brian, who's doing the fabricating, he lives on the other end of the island, uh, two hours away is it? More than two hours. And so he, he uh, did a great job in this and he, he set this stanchion, stanchion up just by memory. <laughs> His memory's not what it used to be. Anyway, it's all looking really hey, uh, good yeah. now. Hassle the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. The old baby guy. <laughs> all right. Just want to say thank you to Brian for coming all this way. Of course, I drove him. Um, <laughs> you know, I want, I want to thank him for coming down and spending time fitting that pulpit. It's, it's a bit of a challenge. And I don't expect you to do anything for nothing, so I'm paying you in Rover coin. Rover coin. Yeah. Which keep, are, keep keep the change. I hear they're worth millions. <laughs> well, it's, it's an investment. It's actually really you know. nice. There you go. It says launch 2023. You better crack on. <laughs> that is a message for life. <laughs> I think it's your message. <laughs> Perfect. So with the horrendous weather we're having, I took the opportunity to start in on the rudder design, which I've actually done a huge redesign on the rudder. And at the same time, I'm starting in on the Mark III that I'll be building for this, which is part of this steelwork right here. So um, yeah, more about that in a later episode, because it's actually uh, quite an interesting Quite an interesting rudder. It'll be a lot more different than I think many of you are anticipating. Well Rovers, next week you should see big changes on Wave Rover. I'm going to give you a really good in-depth boat tour of what's happening. But between now and then, I may have to adjust the launch date. Stay tuned on that one. As always Rovers, thanks for watching and forge your own adventure. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a very special announcement. Rover Coin has arrived. And in the ancient tradition of seafarers, this coin, which is, has an individual serial number, 001, will go under my mast. Now I had to order 100, of which 85 are available as a fundraiser. Now, I'm not sure what metal they're made out of, but it's not gold, although you might think so. But I have it on good authority from someone in the Summerside Financial District that Rover Coin could be 
a great investment in two ways. One, Wave Rover has a great adventure and this individually numbered coin grows with the popularity of the Wave Rover 650s. And two, that Wave Rover and her skipper come to an untimely end and Rover coins will skyrocket in value. That's not exactly a win-win for me. However, if you're interested in Rover coin, uh, they are $125. It's a fundraiser to help me fund the upcoming voyage. Or you might be thinking, hey, I want more than one. Can I get a discount? Of course you can. If you buy three or more, these will be $100 each. I know it's a lot of money and don't put yourself out if you're living paycheck to paycheck. It's not important. I love you guys, each and every one of you, whether you buy a coin or not. But this is a fundraiser to help out Wave Rover. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactors Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. <laughs>